guys, Jen Bridget. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Wendy B. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful card. So let's go ahead and get started. To start with, we're going to be using our crumb cake base. All the measurements and all the card stock you're going to need can be found on my blog. It's in the comments below. Um, so we're going to use the crumb cake base that you've cut. And we're going to start with the hardwood background stamp. Now, I love the stamp, and as you notice, I don't have a sticker on the back. I find that all of my Claremont stamps stick better when I actually don't apply the sticker to them. So as you can see, I've got the stamp laid down. I'm going to then apply the block, and I'm going to flip it on its back, and I'm going to leave it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the chocolate chip ink pad, and I'm going to ink up my stamp, leaving it on its back. I'm just going to lightly tap and apply ink evenly. You don't want to over ink this, otherwise it might get a bit smeary. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my cardstock over top of the stamp just like that. And then I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to lay that over top of that and just apply even pressure everywhere and, and make sure that the stamp is covering the cardstock that I've laid down. I'm going to lift up the scrap that you can see there's a little bit and there we have it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that aside after. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our card base aside now and we're gonna start stamping out the actual seam. Now this is on a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Again, the measurements you can find on my blog, stamprightup.com. The next set we'll be using is the Conda Eclectic Stamp Set. This is in the annual Stampin' Up! catalog. So again, I lay the stamp down, stamp side down, and I pick up the stamp with the block. I'm going to flip it on its back and I'm going to use the So Saffron ink pad and ink up only about half of the stamp. Make sure it's inked up everywhere. Now we're going to start inking, stamping the sun first because that will determine the placement for the rest of the images. I'm going to take the inked up side and I'm going to go just in the very top corner of the image. And I'm going to press down good and hard, especially on the corners, just to make sure that it's actually inking up the image correctly. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my mat. The reason why I have this mat down is for the next stamp set. Photopolymer stamps, unlike the clear mount stamps, do not have the foam in between the rubber and the block. So there's no actual cushion to allow you a nice, even image. This stamp and mat from Stampin' Up! You can find the animal catalog. Um, allows you to get that give from the image to the paper. And that's why I use it underneath all of my photopolymer stamps. So the next stamp I'm going to use is Sheltering Tree Stamp Set. I love this. It comes in a great big huge case, the Woodmill Stamp Case there, and I'm going to use the tree first. When you're mounting a, when you're mounting a photopolymer stamp, I do with all of my stamps, I place the stamp image side down and then I pick up the stamp with my block. That way I know that I've got the stamp correctly positioned and it's stuck to the block as I need it to be. We're going to be stamping this tree in crumb cake ink. Again, I keep it on its back and I just lightly tap to make sure I've got a good even coverage. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the tree sort of close, a, a little bit closer to the sun ray. It's not at the bottom. It's going to be about a quarter of the way up the card. And I'm going to press down, apply even pressure, don't rock the stamp and pick it up and sometimes you'll find that it sticks so I just use my fingernail and I'm going to pull the image off. The next stamp that we're going to be using from the same set is that little sort of um, illustrative paintbrush swoosh looking image. I'm going to lay the stamp image side down, pick it up with my block, using pistachio pudding this time. And with the swoosh part pointing down, I'm going to align that part with the base of the tree. The next thing we're going to want to do is stamp out the grass pieces. And we're going to be doing that in two different colors. In wild wasabi and mossy meadow. So I'm just going to keep those open. I'm going to start with a darker color first. And I'm going to stamp my first kind of off the cardstock a little bit. So it's just peeking up at the bottom there. You can stamp these however you like. All I'm doing basically is just evening out the white space on the card and filling in the image, the scene if you will. Again, I'm stamping a little bit off the bottom here. And then the next color I'm going to be using now is a wild wasabi and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to apply 
the stamp down here, here, and then one more up here. Again, just to fill in some of the white space. Now using my little tiny block, I have picked up the image that looks sort of like little sort of blossoms or like a leaf pile, if you will, whichever, however that looks. It's a little tiny one that's off of the set here. And using the strawberry slush and pumpkin pie, I'm gonna start stamping out the blossoms that go on each blade of grass here. And then I'm going to stamp once. I'm going to lift up and move my stamp just a little bit to the left and stamp again. And that gives you what the, the stamping off will give you the impression that there's the blossoms are full. I'm stamping the pumpkin pie on the darker blades of grass. So I'm gonna stamp, lift up, and just move slightly to the left, about a millimeter or two. And that creates nice full blooms. Again, for the last one, I'm gonna stamp, lift up, and go left, just a millimeter or two, and stamp again. And I'm gonna do the same thing in strawberry slush for the lighter blades of grass. So I'm going to stamp and pull just to the left. And you'll notice that these little um, flower tops align nicely with the little blades of grass. So you can go ahead and align those perfectly because it is photopolymer and they are completely see-through. So again, I stamped, pulled the stamp up and just went slightly left. And the last one, stamp, lift up and just go slightly left. And that's how you get a nice full blossom. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the leaves, the leaf um, set from the stamp set here. So I'm gonna pull that off. I'm gonna place it stamp image side down. I'm gonna pick it up with my block and I'm gonna flip it on its back. Using all three of my greens that I started with, pistachio pudding first, I'm going to ink up the entire leaf bundle here with the pistachio pudding. The next thing I'm gonna do, using wild wasabi and mossy meadow with a sponge dauber, these things here. I'm going to start with a wild wasabi. I'm going to ink up my dauber and just apply random spots of wild wasabi to the um, to the stamp. Now you won't be able to see it. That's one thing with photopolymer. It's difficult to tell where you've actually inked. Just get a good idea of where you've applied the ink and um, apply just sort of random spots. Now with the mossy meadow, this is a very dark color. You will see this on the stamp. I'm going to use the side of my dauber and not the top because if you apply it from the top, it'll, you'll have perfectly round splotches and that's actually not what you're looking for. So I'm using the side of my stamp, sorry, the side of my, of my dauber and applying ink all around the outside and then just in random spots throughout the leaves as well. Now you can sort of see that there is a little bit of color on the, stamps, on the stamp now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and position it over top of the tree. I want to move it up from the flowers and away from the sun, but just enough so that it's actually covering over top of the tree. I'm going to press down and lift straight up. And then that's how you can see there's now three different colors in the leaves of the tree. And that's how you achieve the look. To finish this off, as you can tell, it looks a little bit disjointed. It's kind of white and it's not what we're really looking for. So we're going to start with the Soft Sky ink pad and using a dauber again. I'm just gonna go ahead and start sponging in some color into the top quarter of the image that we've created already. There we are. And doing the same thing with pistachio pudding on the bottom, in the grass area, if you will. Again, I'm staying within the bottom quarter. I don't want to, you do not want to go so far as to connect the, the pistachio pudding with the, the, the grass with the sky, basically. So I'm just going to basically use pistachio pudding and fill it in and just remove some of that white area that we've got there. Now, I don't want to put so much pistachio pudding that it blends in the stamped image and it would take a lot of, of, of um, sponging in. So just keep in mind that you're just basically removing a little bit of the white space and you do want to have a white border between the sky and the grass. And that is basically how we create the image. All we have to do now is basically just to hear our pieces together. So using a piece of pear pizzazz, again, the dimensions are on my blog. I'm going to adhere this piece to that. And then I'm going to create my sentiment. This is another fun little trick that I'm going to show you here. I chose to use a thinking of you sentiment that was actually on the stamp side as well. It's right here. 
I'm going to ink up the stamp. I always like to keep things on as back while I'm inking them. It gives me a, sort of a better idea of where I'm actually applying the ink. And then because it's photopolymer, I can see exactly where I'm stamping. I'm going to press down lightly. And as you notice, the paper will stick. That's okay. Just use your finger and peel it off straight down. And we're going to use our pokey tool, if you will, our piercing, our piercing tool. And I'm going to go ahead and pierce some holes just to the left and to the right to place some brads. Now, I wanted my brads to be actually be a sort of like a goldish warmer color, um, but I couldn't find any catalogs. So what I used are these little mini brads, these little itty bitty ones. I love them. There's so, there's so many in the package too. And what I'm going to do is color them with my uh, Stampin' Up! Blend Abilities. This is the Pumpkin Pie Trio, and I'm using the darkest marker. As you can see, there's a nib and a brush tip. I'm going to use the nib, and I'm going to pull my cap off, and I'm just going to color on the end of this brad with the marker. The more you color, the more you'll notice that you're getting a nice sort of goldish brass tone on the top of the brad. That's one of the great things about these Blend Abilities. You can actually create your own embellishments, coloring on uh, pearls, or rhinestones, you can create a customized color of embellishment. And it doesn't come off once it's on there either. The alcohol, the alcohol evaporates, leaving only the ink. And so now we have a gold tone embellishment custom created specifically for this project. Make sure that when you replace your cap that you put the nib inside where it fits and then press tightly until you hear the snap. I'm going to go ahead and apply some Tombow glue to the back of my sentiment. And don't forget, stamp brush, just a little glue goes a long way. You don't want to over, over glue your images. You'll find it'll warp if you do. And that is something, unfortunately, I haven't learned the trick to fix yet. So I try to use as little glue as possible. I'm going to go ahead and line up my sentiment onto the piece of pear pizzazz that I cut for it. And then I'm going to go ahead and place the brads through that block. And as you can see, even though I'm touching these brads and picking them up, the color is not coming off. So hurrah for blendability being as flexible as they are. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to also go ahead and adhere down the image that we created using our trusty Tombow. I like using liquid glue better than snail. I find it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and a little bit of cent positioning. I'm not very good at uh, putting stuff down correctly the first time, so I like to have a little bit of wiggle room just to make sure I've got it right. And there we go. The last thing we're going to do is apply some dimensionals to the back of our project. We want to get this just a little bit of step up so it shows nicely the hardwood background that we've stamped previously underneath. See? I'm going to just move that aside, move that brad aside apply the dimensionals and then I'm going to grab the card base that we stamped out earlier. I'm going to open it up. I always find this makes it a lot easier to position and I'm just going to place everything down. And there you have it stampers. A beautiful card with the upcoming new sheltering tree stamp set. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions I'm always happy to answer them. Have a great day. Bye.